Two Palestinian journalists have been killed in a targeted Israeli strike. The deaths of these journalists comes on the heels of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's fourth visit to the region in hopes of finding a resolution to the crisis in Gaza. Mustafa Turia, Hamza Vaildadu, both employed with a major Qatar-based media house, were reportedly on an assignment when their vehicle was struck by an Israeli airstrike. According to onlookers, one warhead struck the engine of the car while the other hit Hamza directly. A third freelance journalist travelling with them, that's Hazem Rajab, is said to be seriously injured. Hamza Vail Dadu is the son of Gaza-based war correspondent Vail Al Dadu. Al Dadu was recently wounded in an aerial strike himself. This after his wife and two children perished earlier in Israeli bombardment during the onset of the war. In heart-wrenching visuals from the funeral held on Sunday, Vail Al Dadu was seen mourning the loss of a third child. The world should see with their own eyes and not by Israel's eye. They have to listen and see all that's happening to the Palestinian people. What did Hamza do to them? What did this family do to them? What did the civilians of Gaza do to them? The world is blind to what's happening in the Gaza Strip. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed deep sorrow and apologized over the incident. At a joint press conference with Qatari Prime Minister Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani, calling the deaths an unimaginable tragedy. I am deeply, deeply sorry for the almost unimaginable loss suffered by uh, your colleague, Al Adu. Uh, I am uh, I'm a parent myself. I can't begin to imagine the horror that he's experienced not not once but now now twice Antony Blinken who is scheduled to hold talks in the UAE and Saudi Arabia today has warned that the war could metastasize across the region without concerted peace efforts Blinken was earlier in Qatar and Jordan on a 5 day diplomatic push to assuage tensions in the region following negotiations in the UAE and Saudi Arabia Blinken is also scheduled to head to Israel the U.S. Secretary of State will also be visiting the West Bank and later Egypt this week. Blinken has cautioned Israel to curb civilian casualties in Gaza, emphasizing that Palestinians must be allowed to return to the Strip and should not be pressed to leave their homes. Qatari officials said to have discussed release of remaining hostages with the U.S. Secretary of State. These negotiations come at a crucial time following an earlier impasse which the Qatari Prime Minister has claimed was brought on by the recent killing of a top Hamas leader. Meanwhile, in Tel Aviv on Sunday, families of those abducted on the 7th of October organized a display of shoes at a seaside promenade. Relatives also held a press event at the Hostages Plaza later in the day, with those present thanking the Qatari government for playing a crucial role in the release of the hostages. They view this as a humanitarian crisis and view the release of the hostages as their top priority, where it also serves the bigger objective as they see it, which is creating regional stability. The Israeli cabinet is slated to vote on the annual war budget later this week. Finance Minister Beza Lel Smotrich confirmed so on Sunday, following a successful vote to approve $2.5 billion in financial support for military reservists. Earlier in December, the Knesset approved a special wartime budget of about $8 billion as well to bolster their war effort. Israel's finance ministry has stated that the war is likely to cost an additional $14 billion, which may result in the near tripling of its deficit. That's around 6% of the GDP. Also this week, a special panel at the International Court of Justice will be conducting a hearing on allegations of genocide in Gaza against Israel. Israel has named its former Supreme Court President Aharon Barak as its addition, addition to the panel. South Africa, which has leveled the accusation of genocide against the nation, has also appointed an ad hoc judge to the panel. That's former Deputy Chief Justice Dinkang Mosenike. The hearing is scheduled to be held on the 11th and the 12th of January.